Well, let's explore now the coordinate rules for reflections in the coordinate plane. I've got the four rules that we're going to be concerned with listed right here. Let's visualize this a little bit. I'm going to take this arbitrary point AB. I think it'd be pretty easy for us to see flipping over or reflecting over the x-axis, we're going to get this. Over the y-axis, we're going to get this. We also want to consider reflecting across this line, the line y equals x, that 45 degree line passing through the origin, and finally reflecting across this line, y equals negative x. So these are the four that we're going to be concerned with. Let's now look at a more concrete example. Let's take this point. It's the point 2, 5 in the first quadrant. And we're going to look at this first rule, reflecting over the x-axis. Its image is going to be the point A, negative B. So in this case, this point 2, 5 will reflect to 2, negative 5. And there you have it. So that's one of our rules. Let's try another. Reflecting over the vertical or the y-axis. As our rule states here, AB will reflect to the point negative B or opposite, I'm sorry, negative AB, opposite of A, comma B. 2, 5, negative 2, 5. And there it is. So far, so good. Let's try something a little more exciting. We'll reflect over this line. This is the line y equals x. Again, a 45 degree line passing through the origin. And our rule says here, AB reflected over y equals x. We'll reflect to BA. 2, 5 will become 5, 2. And there's my reflection right there. So let's look at one more. And that would be this line, the line y equals the opposite of x, or y equals negative x. When I reflect across this, according to my rule, reflecting off y equals negative x, a, b will reflect to negative b, negative a. 5, 2 will reflect to negative 5, comma, negative 2. And there you go. Well, this concludes our coordinate rules. We're going to have a look at some sample problems. And as well, we'll look at using matrices to perform these same operations. So let's move on. In this example, this would be number six in the exercises for this section, we are going to take this triangle and reflect it over a line that's, well, it's other than the x-axis, y-axis, y equals x or y equals negative x. We're going to reflect it over the line x equals negative one. So all those coordinate rules we learned aren't going to be very helpful. Let's just visualize this one. First, Let's draw the line, x equals negative 1. And we recall from algebra that is a vertical line. And it's going to look just like this. Any value on this line, the abscissa, or x is negative 1, but y could be anything else. So let's visualize what this looks like first. I can imagine the reflection is like that. Now we don't have any coordinate rules for it, but we do remember that the distance from the pre-image to the line of reflection must be the same as from that axis of reflection to the image. Now very conveniently this is going to be I could just count these four horizontal units since it is perpendicular to a vertical line and I could do the same for each of the other points. That would be the easy way to find this one. Let's move on to something more challenging. And just let's take a quick look at this concept, and that would be the 
reflection matrices. We're going to have four of these. In this particular case, we've got reflection over the x-axis. So I've got this blue pre-image and I'm going to reflect it over the x-axis. This is my matrix. It's a lot like the identity matrix. Notice the negative one. Over here, reflecting the y-axis. And again, very similar, but I've got a negative one here. Again, you're going to see a couple zeros. Each of these matrices is going to look a lot like this. Pay attention to these. We'll do a sample like this. Coming up next. So here's one of the problems from the textbook. You can find this um, number seven in the exercises. We're going to take this figure, this triangle ABC, which is graphed on the coordinate plane, and we're going to reflect it. It says well over the given line. In this particular case, they're saying that line is the y-axis. So we know here, we're going to say, well, let's show the axis of reflection. That's the y-axis, the otherwise known as the line x equals zero. Now we could do this a couple different ways. We could just follow the coordinate rules that we learned earlier and be a piece of cake, to be honest. But just look at what we get here. We know that AB maps to negative AB. Or if we just looked at the whole picture, look at this. And I can just imagine what my figure does. It's reflecting over the y-axis. Well, that's easy enough, but let's have, you know, in each of these points, for example, see, you've got, you've got negative three, one, flips over two, three, one, easy. But let's see if we can do this a more interesting way. Let's consider the matrix manipulation. I'm going to go back. I'm going to hide this for a minute. Let's go back to the original pre-image. And that would be for the triangle ABC. As you all know, 1, 4, that's the coordinates of A. 2, 2, coordinates of B. Negative 3, 1, coordinates of C. Now, let's try this. We're going to do a matrix multiplication. This is the transformation matrix. The transformation matrix that we're going to use when we are reflecting across the y-axis. And all we've got to do now is do the multiplication. Let's practice our matrix multiplication. So we know that we're going to end up with the image here. We'll take the first row times the first column, negative one times one plus zero times four. Well, we have, we've got a pretty good idea what that's going to give us. It's going to give us negative one. And now, we'll just go right down the line here. Second row times first column gives us this product. Second row, first column. Zero times one, one times four. And of course, we can all see that that is going to be four. Let's move on to the next column. Let's go to the first row, oops, missed it, times the second column. Negative one times two, negative two, plus zero times two. And you can see right there that my B prime, negative two. Moving down here, second row, second column, the product goes in the second row, second column. 0 times 2, 1 times 2, and that's going to give us the whole number 2. We're almost there. Let's go back up here to the first row times the third column, negative 1 or opposite of negative 3, plus 0 times 1, and that is, of course, going to give us the whole number 3. And for our last element, second row time the second row times the third column oops, is going to give us the second row third column for a product zero times negative three one times one and that is of course the whole number one when we look at look back at our original conclusion there it is and I can see now the coordinates of a prime negative one four Coordinates of B prime are going to be negative 2, 2. 
and the coordinates of C prime, 3, 1. Well done. And another example from our textbook. This is homework problem number 9 in the exercises. And we're going to take this given polygon, this triangle, and we're going to reflect it over the x or over the line y equals x. Now again, we'll just do this one using the coordinate rules. And you see here we have in red a b reflected in the line y equals x, its image will be the point b a. So let's get a picture of what's going on here. That's the line y equals x. And down here in the first and fourth quadrant, I have the pre-image, and it's going to reflect over here. And I can see, for example, the coordinates of C are 4, 1. Reflected, it's going to be 1, 4. Look at A. That's 6, negative 3, negative 3, positive 6. Again, just reversing the two coordinates. 1, negative 2, negative 2, 1. And that's all there is to it. The other two matrices that we're going to be using here um, are the matrices necessary for finding the reflection over y equals x and y equals negative x, or the opposite of x. Notice these two are a little bit different looking. In this matrix, uh, you'll notice that the non or the zero elements are from upper left to lower right. So that's a little bit different than what we're used to seeing. Now the non-zero elements are lower left to upper right. Same thing is true on this one. And this one has the added complication. We've got a couple negatives in there. We're going to do a sample of uh, at least one of these in this uh, short lesson, and we'll see how it goes. Well, let's revisit that previous problem, and that is taking triangle ABC and reflecting it over the line y equals x over here. Let's, let's revisit that with matrices. After all, we need to get some practice in this section. So, uh, again, we are, we're trying to reflect over this line, but we're going to do it this way. I'm going to take this matrix, which will be the pre-image. I can look at this, the coordinates of A, 6, negative 3, coordinates of B, 1, negative 2, and the coordinates of C, I'm seeing 4, 1. So I've got that in my pre-image matrix here. I go back to my transformation matrix, the one that is essential for reflecting over the line y equals x, and I'm just going to do the arithmetic, just like we did last time. My image will be over here. And let's try this out. First row times first column. We know how that goes. 0 times 6, 1 times negative 3. That's going to give me a negative 3, and that will be in location 1, 1. And when I move to second row, first column, second row times first column, 1 times 6, plus 0 times negative 3. That's going to give me the 6. Let's try that again. Keep going. First row with the second column, 0 times 1, plus 1 times negative 2. Second row, second column, 1, 0, times 1, negative 2, and that's going to be 1. Our final column, first row, times the third column, 0 times 4, plus 1 times 1. That's going to give us 1. And finally, second row, third column, 1 times 4, plus 0 times 1, and that is going to give us the 4. Of course, when I look at the pre-image matrix, and I look at the image matrix, I can see that this multiplication had the net result of effectively switching 
all the x values of x with the values of the y. 6, negative 3 becomes negative 3, 6, 1, negative 2, negative 2, 1, etc. And as before, I have this, my image is over here, and that's the reflection. So there's one more way to get it done. Make sure you figure out how to do this. You're going to need this when you get to Algebra Here's 2. another sample from our homework, and we can see that we've got this quadrilateral, A, B, C, D, and we're going to reflect it over the line y equals x. Now, if you remember back to our coordinate rules, we have our fourth stated coordinate rule, a, B, reflected in the line y equals negative x. Its image is the point negative B, negative A. So let's have a look at that. I've got this point A. The coordinates of A are negative 3, comma 2. Well, the if I were to reverse and take the opposite, I would have 2, negative 2, comma 3. If I take the coordinates of D, negative 4, negative 1, reversing the order and taking the opposites, I would have 1, 4, and I can expect to be up here. C has the coordinates negative 2, negative 2, reflected over this line would be 2, 2, and I can expect my image will look like this. This is the line of reflection, and there is my image. Let's and close out this unit with one of the fun problems. Oh, this textbook loves these. This is number 21. Finding the minimum distance. Find the point C on the x-axis such that AC plus BC is at a minimum. Well, let's draw those. AC BC. Clearly, when we move far to the left, they're both growing, so that's no good. Far to the right, they're both growing. Somewhere in the middle, green's getting shorter, red's getting longer. Where is the optimum? Well, actually, the answer is straightforward if we consider the reflection. Let's take point B and reflect it over the x-axis. Now, all of a sudden, we can say this distance, because it's reflected over the x-axis, the distance from B to C is the same as B prime to C. And, as we know, as we move this figure around, all we need to do is make A, C, and B prime collinear. So there you have it. Our minimum distance is right there when the point C is at negative 4, 0. And we are done. Hope you've enjoyed the lesson, and we'll catch you on the next video. Good night.